All right, so we're going to look at the hamstring now and the way it can present to us clinically, which is a couple of different ways. People come in and say, I've got hamstring pain. Us manual therapists typically think of a muscle-based pathology and we'll be looking for a strain. Sometimes though, hamstring pain can present as a result of a neurological problem. So the sciatic nerve either being tethered in the muscle or, or a problem further up that chain of the nerve into the spine, which is referring pain down. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways that we can identify whether it's a muscle-based pathology or a nerve-based pathology. The first test we're going to do is the 90-90 straight leg raise. So this one here, we bring both the knees up for me, so we can do this actively for me. So our patient brings their knees up to 90 degrees. They can hold those themselves with their hands. So hold the back of your thighs with your hands, hold them there. I make sure that those hips stay at 90 degrees, so just there. And then he actively extends both of those knees to end range. So he pushes those up. And that's his end range there, and it's not as good as we might like. And so if we're looking at then an angle between the flat parallel angle and then the angle of the leg, we're looking for somewhere between 70 and 90 degrees is considered textbook or normal hamstring length. So I'm going to get our patient to do that again for us. So full range. He's trying really hard here. Uh, and we're probably just on the cusp of 70 degrees. We'll bring that back down. So while his hamstrings are tight, they're probably not pathological at this point. So if he came in complaining of a specific point of pain in the hamstring, it could be contributed to by that, by that shortness, but it more likely would either be a strain where he's overloaded the tissue or something related to the nerve, as I mentioned before. The next, the next test we can do is, a, is a, I guess, a version of the straight leg raise where we lift the leg up and we start to extend not just the hamstring, but other tissues that pass along this chain. So as we lift this leg, we then ask for feedback about where their discomfort might be. If he says the same spot on the hamstring, the way to differentiate that from a muscle-based problem to a nerve-based problem is to then lengthen or tension that sciatic nerve. And the easiest way to do that is just take this foot, bring it into dorsiflexion, and see if that increases the pain locally. Now, when you think about this logically, dorsiflexing the foot shouldn't increase pain in a muscle at the hamstring because uh, changing the angle at the ankle doesn't change the length of the hamstring. It doesn't cross that far. So if we're dorsiflexing the foot, we're extending or tensioning that sciatic nerve, which then could create pain locally. That could tell us then that either the sciatic nerve is tethered at that point, or the tension on the nerve itself is creating some kind of referral pain down to that area. So it helps us identify further into that tissue what might be the cause. Another thing you can do is literally go in and palpate through the hamstring and feel for any thickening or, or changes in texture of the tissue to feel for where, that where that nerve might be tethered into the muscle. And there's also further tests that you can do, such as slump tests, other neurological tests, to see if it might be coming from further up. But the two things that I'd like you to try the next time someone presents with hamstring-based pain is that 90-90 straight leg raise, and then the straight leg raise with a neural tension to see if that can differentiate nerve from muscle pain.